Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures if you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be. But you don't know where to begin. You have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable. And you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 33 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug fever recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself. On a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have questions about formulations, ingredients, the health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, Give us a shout, 844-236-6010. We can help you. We want to be your go-to resource for all things health and nutrition, and we love hearing from you at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase Longevity products, call 866-735-2470 or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And uh, also take a look at our uh, Longevity products, and you can also click at the join, click on the Join the Team link <coughs> Excuse me at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com if you want to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $30 fee. You can be in business for yourself. Also take take a look at our truth shopping products, protein powders, probiotics, enzymes, all up at truthnourishment.com. Thank you to Robert Lundgren for setting that up. We also have blog posts and news stories at truthnourishment.com. And also uh, take a look at our skin health products at truthtreatments.com. Truth treatments.com all right welcome back to the bright side we have lots of lines open for you try to call in early so we don't have to leave you on hold 844-236-6010 is our number i want to continue talking about the notion of estrogen and disease the misunderstood so-called female hormone is really a it's a um a a stimulating substance estrogen makes things happen that's the best way I put it. Some people say it's a stress hormone. Some people say it's a growth hormone. Some people say it's a female hormone. <laughs> Excuse me. Basically, it's a dynamic stimulating substance. It makes things happen for better or worse. If there's too much of it or if it's not cleared out of the body appropriately or if breakdown products build up, it makes it, it revs up cells. It makes them divide. It makes them take in fluid. And uh, taking in fluid is a precursor to division, so it causes uh, uh, fluids to not move as well. (laughs) In order for growth to happen, fluids have to kind of pool up. Pooling up of fluids is a precursor to growth always, and that's why estrogen is, is a fluid retention hormone, as many women know. And it also ultimately will put a lot of stress on the system. When I say put a lot of stress on the system, I mean it'll put energy into the system. Basically, stress is energy. When we say we're stressed, we mean we're sucking up energy. We're taking in energy. We're, our body is in a very energetic state. <clears throat> this is not necessarily a bad thing. The stress response is actually something, or stress, I should say, and the stress response is something that we just started talking about maybe 100 years ago. A guy named Hans Selye, S-E-L-Y-E. He uh, came up with what he called the general adaptation syndrome, which is what the stress response is. He said it was the stress response, or the GAS, is divided into three stages. First, you got an alarm reaction. The body prepares to, to go into fight or flight mode. The sympathetic nervous system gets, gets activated. So the first stage in the stress response, or the general adaptation response, is high blood pressure. It is a shutdown of the digestive system. It's a slowing down. Well, it's a, it's a, let's say a slowing down of the digestive system. 
It is a change in the way blood flows. So all of a sudden blood leaves the extremities. You become pale as a ghost. You become white as a ghost. And all the blood goes to your, um, goes into your, uh, your muscles. I shouldn't say your extremities. It goes away from your face and goes towards your muscles. It goes away from the center towards your muscles. So you can run. It's a protective, it's a protective, this is the key. It is a general protective response. That means it is happening everywhere in the body. It's coordinated. All the organs are coordinated through this thing, through the nervous system. There are ner- the sympathetic nervous system is linked to all these various parts of the body. So if you have high blood pressure and your digestive system is showing slowing down and your immune system is, is uh, not working as well as it should and your heart rate is going up and your breathing pattern is changing and your circulation fl- flow is different, all of this has to do uh, with a general stress response, insomnia, anxiety, mental health issues, dry mouth, uh, a, pup- uh, a dryness of all secretions, all the things we suffer from either in the short term or in the long term that we consider to be not comfortable are signs of an activated stress response. Then there's the second stage of this general adaptation syndrome. And this is when homeostasis kicks in. It's called resistance. And uh, this is the second stage, depending on the stressor. I mean, changes can take place on many levels. A stressor could be money. You're going to start to cut back on your buying. Your stressor could be your health. You'll start eating better food. If you don't resist whatever the stressor is, this can have an impact on your physical and emotional well-being. And then you go into exhaustion. In the body, the stressors, what we call the stress response, the sympathetic nervous system response is part of this resistance stage. It's part of how the body resists the lion or resists the credit card bill or resists the uh, the threat, whatever the threat to the survival is. If you don't, if you, resistance doesn't work, you just go into exhaustion. And that's the third stage of the general adaptation syndrome. You exhaust your resources, and this is when we become sick. And ultimately, this is when we'll die. Keep in mind, though, the stress response is key. It's how you handle the stress. It's, and this is where strain comes in. It's how you handle the stress. If your stressor is your credit card bill and you're worrying and your high blood pressure and your blood pressure goes up and you get hypertension, that's not an effective way to handle the stressor. If you deal with your credit card bill, you deal with the mental health issue, the mental issue or the, the thought issue on that level, that is a healthy way of dealing with the stressor. If you deal with the, uh, the high blood sugar by taking metformin, that's not a healthy way of dealing with the stressor. If you deal with the elevated blood sugar by, wor- uh, by worrying about your health, that's not a good way to handle, your, uh, handle the stressor. But if you deal with your stressor by taking chromium and by changing the way you eat and going out and exercise, that's a great way to handle the stressor. See, the stressor itself is not the issue. It's how it is handled. We allow our bodies to handle our stressors in their primitive African Sahara way. We allow the body to handle our stressors in a way that the body isn't quite able to do it. And that's why disease shows up and we go through into exhaustion. The body can't really handle all of our stressors without our intentional help. On its own, if your blood sugar goes up, the body's gonna handle the stressor by glycation, by, by sticking the sugar in various proteins, or by reacting the sugar with various proteins. That's gonna cause glycation, which will ultimately cause neuropathies and blindness. But if you handle the stressor of sugar by changing the way you eat and by exercising, that's a great way to handle the stressor. What I'm saying here, it's not the stressor. It's how we handle the stressor. This is what you stress and dis- versus distress is about. In fact, stress, when it's handled correctly, is part of life. Hans Selye himself said, without stress, there would be no life. It's how we manage the stress. If we allow our hormones to manage the stress for us, there will be a problem. And we're watching it. And that's a large part of our health, care, our health challenges. We're allowing our body to handle what we should be doing on our own. All right. Or helping the body do, I should say. That's a better way of putting it. All right, 844 236 is our number. Most.
Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. I am Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. And also pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com and brightsideben.com have longevity products. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off the websites by clicking on the Join the Team link at pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All right, we're talking about the general stress response. I want to talk about estrogen here in a minute, estrogen being a manifestation of the general st- of the stress response. Or actually, maybe it's not a manifestation of the stress response as much as it's a trigger of the stress response. I'm not really sure which came first, the chicken or the egg, but it's certainly associated with the stress response. The alarm reaction, the first stage of the stress response, that's when you get your adrenaline going and your cortisol going. That's when you, or your blood pressure goes up and your digestion shuts down and or slows down. You can't sleep. You got anxiety. If you're menopausal symptoms, if you're going through menopause, that's a classic example of the alarm reaction stage, the first stage of the stress response. All the symptoms of menopause or the things that we assume are menopausal symptoms uh, that are just come part and parcel with menopause. By the way, menopause is a classic example of the stress response gone crazy. And that means that you can use, you can address menopausal symptoms by all of the things we talk about for reducing or strengthening the stress response. Anyway, first, first stage is alarm. Second stage is when you actually adjust to the alarm in the body. It'll be hormonally. You're uh, supposedly what's supposed to happen is the parasympathetic, the relaxation nervous system is supposed to kick in there's a guy who wrote a book a biologist wrote a book a few years ago named his name Sapolsky called why zebras don't get ulcers and he described this this the first two stages of the stress response to show why zebras or wild anim, wild animals don't stress ulcers are a sign of a problem with the second and third stage I'll tell you what I mean here in a second. Typically in nature, what's supposed to happen is the body is supposed to rest after it's been stressed. It's supposed to go in a healthy system. You get stress and then you get rest. The rest is the, the body adjusting to the stress response. Theoretically, in nature, the stress sore doesn't stay. In nature, the stress sore will kill the animal or the animal will survive it. But one way or another, it, there's no stressor that stays. We've created a culture where we've messed up this system. So we end up with an alarm reaction stage, and then we go into the the body tries to counteract that alarm, but we still have alarm. The alarm doesn't go away because we're still working, or our kids are still giving us a hard time, or our bills are still there, or our tax bill, or our, the IRS is still isn't going away. And what ends up happening there is the constant stressor overrides resistance and you go into the third stage which is exhaustion and that's when we become sick this general adaptation syndrome or dysfunctions in the general adaptation syndrome explain fatigue depression uh, suppressed immunity cancer diabetes all the oh, i should say all the the tox, all the side effects or all the uh, uh, all the problems associated with diabetes, the neuropathies, the, the blindness, the poor circulation, the obesity, all of this is a sign of the body not of having to deal with drip, drip, drip stress. The body can handle the right kind of stress because the first two stages of the general adaptation syndrome will handle it. It's the drip, drip, drip chronic stress. And I'm not talking just psychological stress here. It's the chronic stress from the wrong foods. It's the chronic stress from the sugar. It's the chronic stress from the drugs. We have this chronic stress that overrides the body's ability to handle it. And that's where we go into, uh, that's where we go into the disease. So what does that tell you? It's in the second stage, that resistant stage that we have power, but we've abdicated it. We don't, that's that resistant stage is where we should be taking our supplements and exercising and changing our lives and doing things that we're supposed to do to stay healthy. It's the drip, drip, drip stress that overrides the system where we should be adjusting our lifestyles, adjusting, allowing the body to adjust correctly if, uh, if that's what's supposed to happen, but helping the body with nutrition, with exercise, with mental health strategies. Stress that crosses a certain threshold of intensity when it's done correctly Well, guess what? It will cause the system to adjust upwards. That's called systems theory, by the way. That systems theory describes how systems grow. 
systems evolve and get better, like your muscles, when they're stressed past a certain threshold of intensity within a context of rest and relaxation. Within a context of, context of rest and relaxation and nutrition, stress will cause a system to evolve to become better. The bone is stronger at the point of the break. Drip, 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 stress doesn't allow that to happen. In the book, Cracking the Aging Code, by uh, Dorian Sagan, who's Carl Sagan's son, and a guy named Josh Middledorf, they describe the relationship between a specific kind of stress called intermittent fasting, or also known as temporary starvation, and longevity. It turns out that intermittent fasting and starvation, and they don't say this, but uh, caloric restriction, increase longevity. Putting the body in a state of stress, starvation stress, stimulates anti-aging chemistry. There's a whole class of chemistry, of chemicals called sirtuins, which most people don't even, haven't really caught on to yet. Certainly, the, the late, you'll, you'll hear about them. In chemistry, when you, when you uh, biochemists learn something uh, or, or discover something, it's about 20 years before the general public gets it. It might be faster these days. You'll, you'll hear about sirtuins. We've known about sirtuins now for about 20 years. S-I-R-T-U-I-N-S, -I -I maybe, maybe a little longer. Uh, these are chemicals, anti-aging molecules, that are sec secreted in response to stressors, in response to fasting, in response to physical duress. All of uh, the sirtuins are the reason why all of these uh, uh, strategies are longevity strategies. Intermittent, by the way, being the key word. Starvation is not a good thing. Nobody's saying to go out and starve, but intermittent starvation. Keeping the body guessing. When the body is in a guessing mode, it upregulates anti-aging and anabolic chemistry. That's a trick. That's a hack. That's a way to hack into your anti... I mean, it's hard because we are uh, induced to uh, ingest calories at every turn. You can't drive down the highway 10 miles without seeing multiple signs, most highways, multiple signs that tell you to eat something. Walk down any city street, you got signs that are everywhere tell you to eat something. Open up any magazine, watching TV, eating, 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 eating. Starvation, on the other hand, intermittent starvation, that's anti-aging. Eating is pro-aging. Eating is pro-aging. Now, obviously, you have to eat, but eating the way we eat is pro-aging. So in order for stress to have value, it has to have the right context. It has to be in the right circumstances, the right conditions. It has to occur within a context of rest. It has to occur within a context of uh, nu uh, nutrition, nourishment. In the skincare world, one of the most common questions, I, I always talk about stressing the skin, how important it is to stress the skin. If you want to have beautiful skin, you got to stress it. Now, there's lots of ways. Well, the main way to stress the skin is to disturb the skin surface, but there's lots of ways you can disturb the skin surface. You can use microdermabrasion to do it. You can use alpha hydroxy acids to do it. You can use retinol, enzymes. There's lots of ways to do it. But the key is, is the, uh, the tissue doesn't grow when it's being stressed. It grows the next day when it's being rested. And that's why you got to take days off from your alpha hydroxy acid program, just like you got to take days off from your uh, workout program at the gym. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. On the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open. We'll get your calls here momentarily. A couple of interesting stories here. I don't, I don't remember if I read this or not. I got this a few weeks ago. Zombie eating. 88% of adults have dined while star, uh, staring at a screen. Survey finds. Zombie eating is when you just eat while you're watching TV or eat when you're at the movies or eat when you're reading a book or eat when you're on the computer, blah, blah, blah. The whole idea of eating is that we're supposed to be paying attention to eating, and the whole idea of eating is that it's regulated by chemistry in the body. We hack into that chemistry every time we process food. We hack into that chemistry every time we zombie eat. We hack into that chemistry every time we eat when we're under stress in a bad way. We hack into the chemistry to disrupt eating, uh, disrupt the eating process, the, biochemics, the biochemistry associated with the eating process. That's why we overeat. The body, it, it, the body has a certain way it likes to ingest calories. And when that way is respected, we ingest far less calories and we're much choosier with the calories we ingest. 
the body likes to ingest calories based on nutrient density. It likes to ingest calories that are associated with nutrients. Throughout history, whenever we got calories, we tended to get nutrients because we were eating living food or food that had recently been alive. We weren't eating processed food. These days, we separated calories from nutrition. So we hack into the body. The body doesn't know what to do with that. The body is getting enough calories. It's getting lots of calories, but it doesn't get the nutrition, and it doesn't know what to do with all of that. Those calories represent major stressors, and the nutrition is the way it's supposed to work, is the nutrients are supposed to help the body handle all that stress. That's not even to mention eating the wrong kinds of foods, foods that we have immune responses to, or foods that, uh, foods that disrupt the chemistry of the intestine, gluten, for example. We have a totally messed up the food supply. That is the core of our disease, of our physiologic disease process, uh, uh, crisis. Now, you throw in the psychological and duresses that the, we, the human body now has to deal with, that the human body didn't have to deal with uh, 10,000 years ago when it was growing up. And of course, that compounds it. But the food is the key. That's why every study that's ever been done on longevity has shown that the less you eat, the longer you live. I hate to be the bearer of bad news because we all love to eat. We get our, our, all those yummy dopamine molecules secreted and oxytocin molecules secreted and we forget about our problems for a little bit and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but it's actually good news because if you're sick, that represents a major, major leverage point for you to deal with your uh, health, illness. Major leverage point. The most important leverage point by far is the food you eat and the sugar you ingest. If you're sick, that represents a, that, that should be the best news you've ever heard. If you are sick, if you have diabetes, if you have kidney disease, if you have autoimmune disease, the relationship between food, food slash inflammation, food slash and uh, 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 the protective response and your disease state should be not only the best news you ever heard, but the most important place that you can, that you want to leverage if you're, for your health. If you're going to the doctor and getting a drug before you handle, before you work at that level, you have totally drinking, drank the Kool-Aid. All right, get your calls here just a second. Speaking of food, this is from uh, Dr. Robert. Uh, this is this is from uh, the Chicago Tribune. Dr. Robert Lust, Dr. Robert Lustig, L-U-S-T-I-G. He's got a bunch of really great books on sugar. Uh, this is a study that he, that he uh, this is a study that he quotes in the book Fat Chance: Beating the Odds Against Sugar. Quote: Sugar science shows that a calorie is not a calorie, but rather that the source of a calorie determines how it's metabolized. That's what I'm talking about. If the source of that calorie is processed food, it's going to be metabolized completely differently than if it was a, than if it's a uh, vegetable or a fruit. Scientists at the University of California in San Francisco say sugar is making us sick. They've launched an initiative to bring information on food and drink and added sugar to the public by reviewing more than 8,000 scientific papers that show a strong link between the consumption of added sugar and chronic diseases. Quote, the common belief until now is that sugar just makes us fat, but it's becoming clear through research that it's making us sick. Unquote. Fatty liver disease is the classic example of what excess ingestion of sugar can do to the body. Kidney disease is the same thing. It's no accident that as our sugar consumption goes up and as diabetes, the rates of diabetes and metabolic syndrome go up, so, do, so does do liver and kidney problems. If you got kidney, if you have a kidney issue, first of all, your kidneys, they have to be really, really deteriorated for you to have a kidney issue. You can pretty much, ha you can pretty much go around living your life at 25% kidney function. It's not a good thing. If you have kidney disease, the fastest way to heal your kidneys is to start, is to lay off the sugar and to start doing nutrients that help your body process the sugar. Kidney disease is just one of the masks, one of the faces of diabetes, as is, or dysglycemia, I should say, as is fatty liver disease, both of which are epidemic. Speaking of diabetes, this is from, uh, this is from the Federation of American Societies of Experimental Biology. More evidence suggests type 2 diabetes is an inflammatory disease. Huh, what does that mean? 
study provides novel insights allowing development of tailor-made anti-inflammatory based therapies to reduce the burden of type 2 diabetes that's according to dr alexander rosendahl phd he says that if you want to deal with your diabetes we need to come up with more anti-inflammatory medication no you need to figure out why you're inflamed it's the sugar blood sugar inflames us blood sugar is very pro-inflammatory because inflammation is a protective response and sugar is very active it's like a it's like a, 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 a nuclear bomb inside your bloodstream and your body's protecting itself from that explosive activity sure the sugar molecule is highly explosive and it needs to be controlled yes you need it but it has to be controlled it has to be the, the energy it provides has to be harnessed and channeled by all kinds of unbelievably fascinating microsco uh, uh, sub-microscopic chemistry, quantum chemistry. Too much of that stuff, too much of that sugar creates a defensive response. That's inflammation. Too much of that sugar creates damage to proteins especially. That's inflammation. This is our first two points in the triangle of disease. The food and the digestive system. All right, I'm sorry. The di food and the, digestive and the digestive system and sugar. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's say good morning to our friend Barry in New Orleans. What's up, Barry? Good morning. Yes, uh, good morning. Yes, I um, want to ask, because um, um, someone was just recently telling me that um, when one gets too much um, protein, say your body uh, secretes that. So, secretes, uh, say that again, your body secrete or excretes it? Yeah, yeah, excretes it, yes. So, uh, well, yeah. yes, yeah. that's true. What were you going to ask me? Oh, okay, well, yeah, because uh, I, I've, you know, I've seen, um, you know, things on the computers talking about, you know, um, you know, how bad getting too much protein is. No, it's not that it's bad. It's that, well, there's a couple things associated with protein. Um, it does, amino acids do have to be excreted, and there's a whole bunch of metabolic toxins that are produced. Typically, they're, that's not a problem, but too much protein and, and inability to handle it can be an issue. Hang on, Barry. We'll finish that up when we come back from our break. That's a good question. There's a lot of misunderstandings about protein. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. On the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Barry in New Orleans about protein. Kind of misunderstood of the uh, three, uh, three major food groups, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Protein, proteins are the superstars. They're the Brad Pitts of the, of the uh, three, three macronutrients. Proteins do the work. Proteins are basically exactly the same basically, as fats and carbohydrates, but they have a nit as fats, I should say, uh, and carbs, but they have a nitrogen attached to them. They're a, they're a carbohydrate with nitrogen, or a fat with nitrogen. Fats and carbs are basically the same thing, too, in the sense that uh, carbs are, are, are carbohydrates, uh, fats are long chains, or, or storage forms of carbohydrates. And then you stick a nitrogen on there, and you get a protein. That's basically all macronutrition right there in a nutshell. Sugar, Long chains of sugar is fat, and then you stick a nitrogen on them, and you get a and you get protein. That nitrogen makes all the difference in the world. It's why proteins have are handled completely different. Nitrogen does work. We talked. I, I'm just blown away by nitrogen, and it's just the most fascinating element to me for a lot of reasons. But the fact is, is that nitrogen makes things grow. So we have NPK fertilizers. That's why you have algae blooms in. Uh, in uh, certain areas of the ocean because of high nitrogen content in the water, uh, from, mostly from pollution. Other elements, phosphorus also is involved too. Uh, but the point is, is that nitrogen creates the problems. Nitrogen creates the, the power of protein and also creates the, power, the problems that nitrogen is eliminated in, in the body in ammonia and in urea. And I think this is what Barry, this might be what you're talking about. What, what have you heard about, and then I'll explain why I, I think it's, it's not really accurate to talk about protein toxicity, which you do hear sometimes people talking about. What, what have you heard about it? Yeah, well, I was talking to um, a, a man who was in medical school, and, and, and the reason I asked him the question is because I've been looking on the computer and a lot of, you know, a couple of things I've saw talk about how, you know, the dangers of getting too much pro protein, how it's so, uh, it's, it's not... 
is very harmful if you get too much. No, that's not. None of that's true. If you have kidney disease, you may have a problem, or if you have liver disease, you might have a problem. Uh, but no, that's if you're a healthy person, it's very difficult to overdose on protein. Almost impossible. Protein, by the way, is turned into fat. I don't know if you know this, but protein's turned into sugar and fat. Uh, that's one of the ways the body will handle protein uh, when it, uh, large ingestions, a pro, large ingestion of protein, especially under the uh, under conditions of l- low carb or low sugar. That's what this is the problem with paleo that a lot of people don't recognize. They'll go out and they'll eat lots of protein. They'll keep their sugar down, but they won't lose weight. And they'll be like, what the heck's going on? It's because the protein is getting turned into sugar and then fat. The body's very efficient at doing that. So you got to be careful with eating a lot of protein. If you're diabetic and you're trying to just not get, you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to keep your sugar, sugar down. On the other hand, small amounts or a certain amount of protein is actually very important for building things, but you got to make the body build. If you're just ingesting protein, because protein is a building substance, it's an action substance. If you're just ingesting protein, but you're not working out, or you're not recovering from surgery, or your body's not in some kind of anabolic revved up mode, you're not going to get the benefits of the protein. The trick is to give the body a reason to use the protein. You follow what I'm saying there, Barry? Not just to put protein in your, down your gullet. You know, not just to eat hamburgers and steak all day. And by the way, you can't really binge on too much protein. It's very difficult. Have you ever tried to eat a lot of protein all at once? No. Oh, no. Most but, people uh, don't. You don't really I'm, binge on steak. You, you know, once you've had enough, you've had enough. You can't eat a lot more. And yeah. that's just the, way, the pr- way protein is. If you've ever had a smoothie, a protein smoothie, you put too much protein in it, you know you don't feel so great if you do too much protein. So, you know, it's, it's sort of self-limits. If you have kidney problems, then you might want to start paying attention. Protein turns into a, one of the ways the body handles ex, uh, excess amino acids is by turning them into ammonia. And ammonia can be toxic. Ammonia then is what's supposed to happen is then the ammonia gets turned into urea. You've heard of blood urea. They'll measure blood urea to see how much urea is in your blood, how well you're, because your kidneys are supposed to deal with that urea. That's a measurement of kidney function. Now, if your kidneys aren't dealing with the urea, then you can run into a problem because urea is a source of nitrogen. It's called BUN, blood urea nitrogen. You don't want that stuff too high, just like you don't want it in the oceans too high. You don't want things growing inappropriately. You don't want things the system revved up too much. So elevated blood urea nitrogen is a marker of kidney disease. That can be a problem, but that's, that's if you have kidney disease. But if you're a normal person, I don't know necessarily that I would worry too much about um, would worry too much about taking in too much protein. Although it's not you don't need it, and like I say, it'll get turned into fat. But uh, it's not like you'll die or you get get toxic from too much protein. Is that what you read? Um, no, it's not that. It's uh, well, it's just that it, it says it's very harmful and that. No, you know, that's. I'd like to see where you said where they, you read that. If you send me a link, I'd like to see that. There's all kinds of craziness on the internet that's not biochemically intelligent. So, you know, keep your calories low. Have as much of your calories as you can from fat and protein. That's basically, that's basically your, your eating, should be your eating strategy. And then make sure you're getting veggies and micronutrients. It's really not complicated. You know, the, it becomes complicated when we decide we want to eat like our society is telling us to eat. Or our society, our culture is inducing us to eat. That's where we run into a problem. And I understand if you're, you know, you're trying to be a social person and you got a family and you got loved ones and you go out to dinner and you have parties and it's just, it's tough. It really is tough. That's where micronutrition can be helpful because micronutrition, this is really important. And I know if you've you've listened to this program before, you've heard me say it, but I haven't said it in a while. Micronutrition helps the body deal with the macronutrition. And so by getting on a micronutrient supplement program, you'll find that you're less likely to overeat macronutrition and there's no calories in micronutrition, but micronutrition helps you utilize calories. Micronutrition helps you get more bang for your buck. So if you're eating lots of, if you can't stop eating and you're eating lots of calories, you may find that your cravings for calories are reduced when you get on a micronutrient supplement program, because now your body can use those macronutrients more efficiently for energy. Now, if you're eating psychologically, and a lot of us do, that's different. You know, then, you know, there's nothing that will replace a scoop of Ben and Jerry's in terms of as, as an antidepressant, the, the power of that. 
because we get all kinds of reward chemistry that's wired to the, to the uh, Ben and Jerry's or to the French fries or to all the foods we eat pretty much. All the foods we eat, or I should say all the foods we overeat, we overeat because we're getting some, for some reason, we're activating pleasure chemistry. And food manufacturers know this good and well, and they will actually stick chemicals in processed food that we don't even know what, how to pronounce them, let alone what they do to our brain, that actually activate these pleasure centers. That's why you get addicted to chips. Chips are the worst offenders, and it's no accident that some of the biggest, most profit-intensive companies in the world are chip manufacturer companies. They're basically selling us chemicals that compel us to eat their product. It's pretty nasty business. The food processing business is pretty nasty. It, it preys on drives, built-in hardwired drives that have been evolutionarily programmed into us for millions of years, and we essentially have no, well, we have some probably, but not a lot of control over. And then not only do they prey on these drives, but they actually manipulate these drives with chemicals. It's really nasty business, and it's why we want to give McDonald's the finger as we drive by, not drive through. And not just McDonald's, but, you know, necessarily and, and, uh, and Nabisco and Frito-Lays and all these chip and cereal manufacturers and processed food manufacturers that are really in many, many ways responsible for number one, not for, for first of all, the health crisis that we're dealing with this, of biblical proportions in this country, but, but also the craziness. I'm not convinced that the craziness, the sh mass shootings and all the ridiculous, violent crimes that are going on in the world are not the result of, of nutritional deficiencies and processed foods. Nutritional deficiencies and processed food. I said both because they both go hand in hand. All right. I didn't mean to rant on that, Barry. Does that help you or do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, yes, but, but in a nutshell, it is a fact that if one gets too much protein, uh, say uh, 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 daily, uh, uh, your body does excrete it daily. Is that, that's yes, that. your body is is well equipped to handle a, a, the a, a correct amount of protein, and it's very difficult to overload that system if you are healthy. If you have kidney problem, that's different. If you're dealing with kidney disease, then that is different, and you want to be a little bit more careful at that point. But you know, you don't need you don't need a lot of calories. And just ingest a reasonable, moderate amount of it, and you should be fine. I wouldn't worry about taking in too much protein. You got It's really unlikely that anybody's going to be any healthy person is going to suffer from a problem with too much protein. All right. Okay. I got to go, Barry. We're out of time, but thank you for your call. Always appreciate your input. I love my smart, bright side listeners, and that means you. If you've been listening to the bright side today, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful awesome, spectacular day. Don't forget to check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, truthnourishment.com for our truth shopping, nutritional products, and also truthtreatments.com for our skin health products. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.